Welcome back to Plug Life Television and to part two of the Balancing the Grid episode of What Barriers Balancing the Rapid Charge to Electric Vehicles? Last time out, we looked at how the national grid would be able to cope in the middle of a brutally cold winter if every single car in the UK was electric, and it turned out it could actually cope surprisingly well. This time out, we're going to be looking at a summer scenario. We're going to look at the potentially large role that solar power has to play, and since so many cars are driven during the day, how can we match the production of that power from solar panels to the charging of electric vehicles. Last time we looked at the UK's 31.3 million cars and the distance that they drive each year and asked if the grid could cope with all of them being electric during a particularly cold and brutal winter. As our calculations showed, the answer was yes. But we've still to look at summer scenarios, the role of solar PV in storage, and how we will stagger charging of the nation's electric vehicles to avoid overloading the grid. This is national grid power demand data taken from a typical sunny summer day. Demand peaks at about 6.50pm before falling to a low point of between 22 and 23 gigawatts between midnight and 5am. Now let's see what would have happened if the grid had continued to supply its peak power of 32.8 gigawatts overnight. The additional energy that would have been generated over this time would have been 87 gigawatt hours. As we discussed last time, the average daily energy use of an EV in the UK is 5.4 kilowatt hours. So the total daily energy demand of all of the UK's cars, if they were electric, would be 169 gigawatt hours. This means that even if the grid had run at 32.8 gigawatts overnight, we would still need to source an extra 82 gigawatt hours of electricity to meet the demand of all of the UK's cars. This equates to an extra 5.86 gigawatts of power being added to the grid overnight to produce this amount of energy, which is equal to 18% of the peak power demand in summer and 12% of the peak power demand in winter. Let's look at where all of this energy came from over this 24 hour period. Solar topped 8 gigawatts during the day, but of course this started to taper off in the evening and, unsurprisingly, produced nothing overnight. Wind power increased overnight due to higher wind speeds. This pattern is very typical of wind speeds. Gas provided a lot of peaking power in the evening, before throttling right back overnight due to decreased demand. So gas picked up most of the slack from solar, but it doesn't have to. Introducing EV, PV and energy storage, the holy trinity. As you'll see, and many owners have already seen, these three technologies complement each other incredibly well. There are 31.3 million cars in the UK. 71% of these cars are parked off street on a driveway or in a garage, whilst the remaining 29% are parked on street or in a public car park. We shall discount on street and public parking locations for now. This means that there are 22.2 million cars parked off road in the UK. The average number of cars in a UK household is 1.2. From this, we can deduce that the number of households with off-street parking is 22.2 million divided by 1.2, which is 18.5 million households. We shall assume that, at present, only 20% of these households have solar PV arrays fitted, and even that is a wildly optimistic figure. This means that there are 3.7 million households with both off-street parking and PV arrays, and a further 14.8 million households that have yet to have solar panels fitted. Let's say that the solar arrays will be typical 4 kilowatt peak arrays, which yield about 2,900 kilowatt hours of energy per year, and 14 kilowatt hours of energy on a sunny summer's day. This means that the grid already benefits from 51.8 gigawatt hours of solar electricity on a sunny day from households that have already been fitted with solar panels, but there is an additional 207.2 gigawatt hours of yield that could be tapped into if the remaining 80% of households had solar panels fitted. Now, let's install solar panels on those remaining 80% of households. Remembering that the average daily energy demand of an EV in the UK is 5.4 kilowatt hours, this means that those additional 80% of households can provide enough energy to meet the daily energy requirements of 38.3 million EVs. In other words, if every home with off-street parking was fitted with solar panels, there would be enough solar energy on a sunny summer's day to meet the daily energy requirements of all of the UK's cars with enough excess energy to charge an extra 7 million EVs. Furthermore, these figures don't take into account that there are plenty of households in the UK that don't have off-street parking but do have roofs that are well suited to solar panels. The potential for solar PV in the UK is immense. This is all well and good, 
but many vehicles will be away from home during the day when the sun is shining, returning when it is dark. We need to find a way to balance the grid that allows these EVs to take advantage of all of that solar power. There are three main options. First up is workplace charging. Many workplaces already have charge points fitted, and those charge points will inherently make use of excess renewable energy since any excess solar PV energy that the EV's owner's house is producing will be fed into the grid, thus balancing out the EV's consumption of electricity at the workplace. The second is charging at home during the day. Do not underestimate the number of people that this charging pattern suits well. Not everyone works 9 to 5. The third and most flexible and most powerful option is home energy storage. Charge the home energy storage battery from your solar PV array during the day and use that energy to power your house and charge your car at night. All of these options are entirely valid since the average car spends 96% of its time parked up. Let's look at home energy storage in more detail. On an average sunny summer's day, a solar PV array in the UK will output 14 kilowatt hours of energy. Since the average EV consumes 5.4 kilowatt hours of energy each day, this means that a solar PV array will yield roughly enough energy to charge the car with 8.6 kilowatt hours of spare energy to power the house or export to the grid, which further reduces grid demand. In winter months, a solar PV array will typically output about 3 kilowatt hours of energy each day. This means that even with solar PV fitted to the house, there is still a 2.4 kilowatt hour deficit that is required to meet the daily energy requirement of an EV. But this doesn't matter. On a winter's day, those 14.8 million households that have now been fitted with solar PV arrays will output 44.4 gigawatt hours of renewable energy to a national grid that we know from part one can cope without it. And the presence of a home energy storage battery further reduces peak demand on the grid. Since it can be fully charged at off-peak times, such as overnight, using cheap electricity, which is then used at peak times to power the house, charge the car and reduce demand on the grid. There are plenty of grid-scale storage options too, which I've briefly summarised here. Batteries are becoming increasingly cost-competitive with other storage technologies, and can be deployed within a matter of weeks, plus they react to grid demand in milliseconds. However, arguably they don't have the ability to scale to gigawatt-hour proportions like pumped hydro. Gravitricity is an interesting solution, which uses weights suspended down old mine shafts to store energy. The weight is lowered to power a generator to produce electricity, and the weight is winched back up the shaft using cheap, off-peak or excess renewable energy to store for when it's needed later. While some of these technologies can empty their entire capacity within minutes, they can of course run at lower rates for hours or days if needs be. In conclusion, both in winter and in summer, there is more than enough energy on the national grid to meet the demand of every single car in the UK being electric, and the potential for solar and home energy storage within the UK is huge. So there we have it, of course the national grid can cope in summer if every single car was electric, and it turns out it can be incredibly green in the way it does this if we maximise the use of our free solar resource that we have in the UK, even though we're Occasionally a, a dreech and rainy place, it still has quite a lot of solar potential. Um, 2,900 kilowatt hours of energy per year from the average solar panel array, and I took that from a fairly kind of, you know, rainy part of the country, not like sunny Cornwall or anywhere like that. So I've tried to be slightly pessimistic about that, and even still, the solar resource is huge, particularly in summer, and it even helps out a little bit in winter. And of course, grid storage batteries help to match the production of solar power to the charging of electric vehicles. It's the potential of this is huge and we should absolutely be tapping into it. So that's all well and good, but how do we stop every single car from starting to charge at the exact same time and putting too much stress on the grid or potentially needing more fossil fuels in order to charge them? So there's a number of technological ways to do this to make sure that every single car is charged in the greenest way possible and in the most grid-friendly manner. And we're going to look at those next time on Plug Life Television.